What's up, everybody? Derek Anderson, the DA. All right, check it out. So once again, we got to talk about Disney, and we got to talk about them from the standpoint of something that I absolutely cannot stand, something that I despise, and that's folks that don't take ownership of their own problems. People that just try to pass the book, look for somebody else to point finger at. That's what Disney is doing. I hate when I see that in people. You know, if you did it, own it. That's your problem. You messed up. Take ownership of that. Stop trying to pass the buck to somebody else. Take the rap. Own it. It's you. You did it. But Disney doesn't want to do that. All right. They don't want to look in the mirror, look themselves in the mirror and like, yo, that's on us. Okay. All right. We got to look in the man in the mirror and we got to make a change because we're the ones that's screwing this up. They don't want to see it that way. They always are looking for somebody else to blame. It's like when Bob Iger is blaming, um, you know, the Marvels and the failure of the Marvels on Nia DaCosta when it's like, well, hold up. Why did you hire her in the first place? Because she's a diversity hire and we needed a black woman to direct. Exactly. Instead of saying, yo, we hired a bad director. We shouldn't have hired this director. She clearly wasn't ready. That's why Bob is saying, oh, we should have had some executives on set. Well, if you hired somebody like a Sam Raimi or somebody, because remember when Kevin Feige said, yo, I hired Sam Raimi and everything was smooth sailing. I didn't have to peek over his shoulder, babysit this cat, nothing. Because Sam knows how to make a movie. But then when we hire Nia DaCosta, yeah, we're ready to toss her ass right up under the bus. Again, they don't want to own that they made the mistake. You know, they put that on her ineptitude rather than putting it on their dumbass decision to make a diversity hire. They don't want to put it on that because then that calls them to the carpet and that makes them the reason for the failure. And so it's like this is why I'm starting with this quote. This is why I want to start the video with this quote. All right. From a bug's life. First rule of leadership. Everything is your fault. Everything is your fault. And look, if it, it doesn't matter whether you're a business or whether you're a normal human being. If you live by this principle. All right. If you adjust your life around this principle that everything is your fault, you will find that things go a lot smoother. Things will go a lot smoother because guess what? If it's your fault, it's your job to fix it. You're to blame. And whoever's fault it is, that's the one that's got to fix it. But see, if you make somebody else your fault, oh, it's, it's, you know, the fan's fault, you know, or it's the director's fault. It's everybody else's fault but mine. I didn't do nothing wrong. And see, when you do that kind of crap, guess what? Oh, now I can always point the fingers at other people and the problem never gets fixed. Same problems all over again. Every year it's the same situation over and over again. Company just circling the drain. Stock price going to shit. Why? Because we don't take this lesson to heart. Leadership. And this ironically is from a Disney movie, this quote, A Bug's Life. Ironically, from a Disney movie, they don't want to accept blame. Nope, it's not our fault. Nope, somebody else's fault. They need to go back and watch A Bug's Life. But then that leads us to this article. And this is on thatparkplace.com. Shout out to John F. Trent uh, for the article. A Disney executive says moviegoers that criticize the company's agenda want movies that conform to regressive gender stereotypes. Y'all see what they're saying? Y'all see how they, you know, painting this picture? You know, that, oh, you know, if I'm critical of this dumb agenda because all I want to be is just entertained, I just want you to entertain me. I didn't come for an agenda. And if you're critical of the agenda, oh, well, you know, you just want to conform to gender stereotypes, regressive gender stereotypes. You know, we're all about the progressive over here at Disney. And so we put all of that agenda into it. I mean, they're pretty much telling you what the company's agenda is, by the way. They're just flat out saying it. You know, they're saying, oh, we're the opposite of regressive gender stereotypes. So we're obviously pushing an agenda in our films. And if you don't like it, that means that you're some sort of a bigot. You're some sort of a racist. You're some sort of a sexist. You're some sort of a misogynist. You're something, you know, instead of just saying, well, I'm just here for the entertainment. Yo, I just want to be entertained. I'm not here for all of this other shit. You know, I'm trying to have my kids come in here and we just want to watch a family friendly movie and just have a good time. You know, and since you're not doing that anymore, Disney, deuces, we're out of here. We're going to spend our money somewhere else. You know, if you gave us what we wanted, we would be here. But you're not giving us what we want. We chunking up the deuces and we outro. And I don't think anything's wrong with that. Oh, no, 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 no. Of course not. Of course not. Uh, an anonymous executive from the Walt Disney Company decided to blame moviegoers for the company's films bombing at the box office. Yeah, they're bombing at the box office because you don't have any moviegoers. You don't have any moviegoers because you're pushing an agenda. And moviegoers aren't here for your agenda. Just entertain us, dumbass. Uh, it's hard to believe that these people are in pl uh, positions of leadership and they want to point the fingers at the moviegoers. You know, 
How come Super Mario Brothers, you know, didn't bomb at the box office? You know, how come Barbie didn't bomb at the box office? How come Oppenheimer didn't bomb at the box office? Maybe you should look at those films and see why those films caught on with the movie going public and not your crap. Maybe that's where you should start and say, we're doing something wrong. Oh, no, no, it can't be us. No, no, no. It's these lousy, critical moviegoers. That's who it is. It's unbelievable. Yeah, let's go ahead and check this out. And so it says, Puck writer Matthew Bellani uh, wrote an article last Thursday documenting how the Walt Disney Company's favorability has declined amongst Americans in a poll conducted by Quorum. Uh, the poll found that Disney had the highest unfavorability rating among other blue chip companies. It clocked in with a uh, 21% unfavorable score. So that's basically like, what, one out of five people think Disney's a bad company. That's really trash. Uh, comparatively, Sony had the lowest with just a 5% unfavorable score. Uh, the poll also found that respondents are divided by political party. It found that a fully 30% of Republicans and 26% of independents have an unfavorable opinion of the company compared to only 8% of Democrats. And I mean, that makes a lot of sense. You know, again, people that have more like traditional values, you know, these are the people that are going to be like, yo, I wasn't with all of that, you know, LGBTQ stuff you were shoving into kids content. You know, I'm not really with that. I'm definitely not with the stuff that you're doing out there opposing the parental rights and education bill in Florida. Definitely probably not with that. You know, Disney, you should just be standing on the sideline with all of that stuff. But you guys are jumping in with both feet. You know, it's kind of ridiculous what you're doing over here, at Disney. Uh, pollster David Heron shared his thoughts about these results, saying, while conservatives give Disney higher unfavorables, it's not perceived wokeness that's keeping people from theaters. The more immediate issues facing the entire industry, not just Disney, is the quality of the content and the price of movie going. I mean, yeah, this is true. All right. On all fronts. OK, quality of content, price of movie going across the board. All right. Across the board for everybody. They're all having this issue. And the quality of the content, that's a Hollywood issue. That's definitely a Hollywood problem because a lot of studios, not just Disney, a lot of studios are steeped in the wokeness. So, yeah, they're saying it's not the perceived wokeness that's keeping people from theaters. It's not necessarily the perceived wokeness. It's just like this shit ain't entertaining us, man. We're not entertained right now. I don't know what they don't get about this. Now, in response to this article, an anonymous Disney executive informed Bellani that the fans are to blame for Disney's film bombing. Now, I'm going to jump right to this thing, OK, because here's the quote and I want to blow it up. Yeah, here's the post on X from uh, Sonny Bunch. It says, I love this from Matt Bellani's newsletter. A Disney cannot fail. It can only be failed by the mouth-breathing bigots who refuse to acknowledge the greatness of their films. Yeah, that's what it is. You know, if you don't say that everything that Disney and their agenda-laced content is pushing out there, if you say that this is trash and this is garbage because you're here for entertainment and not for a damn message, oh, you're some sort of a bigot. You are a bigot. You are a racist. You are a sexist. You are a misogynist, you know, and that's all it is to it. All right. And they just dismiss you when they use this language. They're just trying to dismiss you. Don't listen to these people. They're bigots. All right. So here's the feedback, uh, light feedback this holiday week. But I want to share a DM I got from a Disney executive in response to Thursday's column on whether the politicization of the Disney brand impacts the box office. So here's what this guy says. Everyone says it's the movie, stupid, uh, which is an easy thing for people to say. Uh, more appealing movies are a great way to jump the political issues. But more and more, our audience or the segment of the audience that has been been politicized equate the perceived messaging in a film as a quality issue where it is a quality issue there's no other way to look at that messaging in a film takes away from the entertainment especially when it's heavy-handed the way that disney and all of these woke writers in hollywood like to deliver the message they don't deliver the message in the subtext of their stories they hit you upside the head like a two by four to the skull there's nothing subtle about that. Like if you layered your message in the subtext, I've said this many times, you can layer your message in the subtext of a very entertaining film. And, you know, it'll just go right over a lot of people's heads. But the message is still embedded in your story. If you're a gifted writer and you know how to write, you can put all kind of messaging and stuff. I was uh, talking to a friend about... um. What movie was that? Uh, no, no Country for Old Men. And I was saying, yo, No Country for Old Men has a ton of messages and themes and everything that just go right over a lot of people's heads. 
you know, some people say, yeah, I see your stuff there. But like a lot of people are just like, yo, it's a great movie. It's action. It's a manhunt. It's a thriller. I'm enjoying this foot film. And, you know, there's but there's like a message about like the pointless nature of violence. That's definitely in that film. Or there's also a message about like, you know, how chance and happenstance and circumstance has a lot more to do with your fate than the choices that you make, you know. And so you have a little fatalism in there a little bit, you know, so it's like, yo, there's a lot of message in here or sometimes like how true justice is not meted out in life. We had this long discussion about this movie, but you see, it's the difference between good writing, which is what you get from the Coen brothers and the bullshit that you get from these Disney writers, you know, and Disney doesn't want to hold them accountable. They just keep letting them come out with bullshit. And they won't hold themselves accountable. So, uh, gee, who else do we blame? Oh, we got to blame the fans, right? Like like he says here, uh, this segment of the audience that has been politicized. Like, I found this to be utter horseshit. You're telling me that a segment of the audience is responsible for the box office being bad? And not just general audiences just checking completely out? General audiences are not rocking with the politicization of this stuff. It's they're not a part of um like our space, okay? Like a lot of people don't even know who like some of the cats that we love, they don't even know who they are. You know, like it and I mean like trip this. Even if you said you took every like person that subscribed to like, you know, Nerd Rotic, everybody that subscribed to Geeks and Gamers, everybody that subscribed to Young Ripper, everybody that subscribed to all the biggest channels. And keep in mind, we all share subs. Everybody shares subscribers, okay? You guys that are subscribed to me are subscribed to a lot of these other bigger channels. Even if you were to add them up one to one all the way down the line, what would you come up with, you know, of the people that are like in this quote unquote segment of the audience, right? That it has been politicized, you know, us basically. Even if you would add them all up, how many total subscribers do all of these channels have? You know, what would you say? Maybe like, you know, let's say 10 million. Let's say 15 million. Let's go with 15 million people. All right. There's 330 million fucking people in the United States of America. So you mean to tell me that 15 million people and it's somehow, oh, but the other 315 million ain't coming to watch y'all shit. Get the fuck out of here. Okay. This is why Disney's fucking up because you guys are bullshitting. You don't care about this stuff. You just don't care. So you just want to blame everybody. Oh, it's the segment of the audience. The segment of the audience does not have that much sway. We're talking about it. And yeah, we have an effect in, in, in a certain degree because you guys are starting to say, gee, man, maybe they got a point, you know, about this crap. You know, they're telling us what's wrong. Why the general audiences have completely checked out of our content. They're telling us. So there's where the impact needs to be. But it's not like like I can talk to people. Hey, you ever heard of this cat, this cat, this cat? No, nah, I never heard of them. I don't know who the hell you're talking about. You know, people that I know that watch movies all the time and go to movies daily, weekly or whatever. They love movies. They don't know who these people are because they're not on YouTube and Twitter and all of that stuff like that. They're not checking for it, but they have completely checked out of what Disney's doing. They are not fucking with Disney no more. So this guy is an absolute jackass and he's an idiot because he doesn't understand that. And this is the reason why I say, let me go back to it, okay? The first rule of leadership, everything is your fault. You got to start with you. You got to start with what you're doing. Quit trying to look at, oh, well, there's this uh, segment of the audience that's been politicized, okay? And they equate the perceived messaging in a film as a quality issue. They're the reason that everything is messed up. It's not us. Yeah, <laughs> morons. They won't say they find female empowerment distasteful in the Marvels or Star Wars, the latest trilogy starring Daisy Ridley, but they will say they don't like those movies because they are bad. So make better movies becomes code for make movies that conform to regressive gender stereotypes or put the men front and center in the narrative, which is what you're seeing now and what Bob Iger's pivot is about right now. Yeah. So again, we can bring up Sarah Connor. We can bring up Ellen Ripley all the live long day. It's in one ear and out the goddamn other. They don't care. They don't care all about them examples that you just keep lacing them up with. Oh, man, we didn't have a problem with Princess Leia. You know, we didn't have a problem with Xena Warrior Princess. We didn't have a problem with the bride, you know, from Kill Bill. You can just roll off all kinds of examples and tell them, hey, man, these are great characters. It has nothing to do with Daisy Ridley or it has nothing to do with her being a female. It has everything to do with her being a trash character. She's a trash character, yo. Just it, it, look, listen to your audience and what their audience is telling you is, hey, it's not about, oh, we just want them to conform to this regressive gender stereotype. 
We just want good characters. We don't we don't care about what stereotypes and what regressive, progressive or anything. These characters just don't work. OK, that's it. That's uh, that's all. All right. But what we do see is the agenda being pushed. And we're like, yo, you're pushing this female girl boss feminism agenda and it's broken and it doesn't work and it doesn't make for good entertainment. It is not entertaining. OK, it's like there's something like most people will watch these movies. T- peep this. Most people. All right. General audience will just watch the movie and it doesn't work, but they don't know why. All right. And we're basically saying, here's the reason why, you know, you're focusing on this female girl boss empowerment. These are lousy characters. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's a woman. It's a girl boss fantasy that doesn't work for the types of movies you're shoving this thing into. You know, it might work in some other context. I don't know how it does, but maybe it works somewhere else. It's not working in comic book films. It's not working in Star Wars. All right. Chris Gore. Make Marvel male again. Everything will sort itself out. Stop trying to push M, she, you. That's it. That's what the, that's what the segment is telling you. And they're actually doing you a favor because they're trying to tell you why your shit is broken, but you don't want to listen to them. So yeah, again, that's the reason why these clowns are going to continue to lose money. It's just ridiculous, man. But anyway, folks, I I just had to rant about that because, I mean, it was under my skin all day. I've been seeing everybody else talking about it. I'm like, look, I got to get my own thoughts out about this, you know. So thanks for listening to this little long video. But you guys let me know what you think about this situation. Jump down in the comments. Give me your thoughts and opinions on that. And thanks for watching. See you next time.